Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. So you can see that I'm going to be talking about the beauty of mathematics uh, today and how do we promote creativity in mathematics learning. So I hope that you're interested in this topic and please keep watching if you want to hear about my thoughts about how to promote creativity and really show students the beauty of mathematics. Okay, so you can see that I'm going to be talking about the beauty and creativity of mathematics. I'm going to just move myself uh, out of the way and make myself a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to make myself a little bit smaller and just put myself here in the corner. So I'd like to start off with this picture and I'd like you to Take a look at this picture and, and tell me, what do you see? So you might just like say it out loud, the things that you see. And I've asked other people um, about what they see. And they've told me that they see obviously happy, smiling faces and um, lovely diverse range of different cultures as well. And for me, I see young children, elementary children and babies that are really happy. And I think this is how they experience school and mathematics learning at elementary level. But I think that when they get to secondary level, they actually start looking like this. And research has been conducted and surveyed thousands of teenagers and basically found that there's this huge significant drop in an interest in STEM careers and mathematics specifically. And in girls, there's even a lower level of interest in pursuing any kind of STEM career. And so I think that there's a big difference how our students experience mathematics learning from elementary to secondary school. And I'm hoping that in secondary school, we'll be able to still ignite the, the passion and the love for learning mathematics um, by maybe talking about the beauty and the creativity side of it. But before I move on to that, uh, I want to just discuss this false dichotomy. And you can see in this diagram that, you know, there are two camps in the world. There's one camp that thinks that we teach for just conceptual understandings and big ideas. And then there's the other camp that thinks that we just teach facts and skills. And sometimes this is called back to basics, the back to basics movement. And I think that we live in quite a sad state of affairs when it comes to math education, especially in secondary school, if I can be as bold to say that. And I think that this is a false dichotomy in that you actually need both. You need both conceptual understandings and you need facts and skills in order for deep learning to occur in mathematics. And so I'm encouraging everyone to include the facts and skills as a foundation in order to be able to build deep conceptual understandings. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we just start with the facts and skills um, with our students, because imagine if you were learning music and you learn how to read the notes in music and you learn how to play scales, but you never had the opportunity to create music and, uh, and listen and appreciate to a piece of music. Or another analogy that I like to use is with basketball. Imagine if I teach you all the drills in basketball, but you never get to ex actually experience a game. And so while you need to be good at those basic fundamental basketball skills, you want to actually appreciate the game of basketball for what it is. Use those facts and skills in a context when you're playing the game. So I'm hoping uh, to encourage everybody to use both conceptual understandings and facts and skills and not necessarily just use facts and skills in isolation. So I'm going to move on to, you know, why do we need to promote creativity in mathematics? Creativity, as we know, has been the driving force of innovative breakthroughs and technological advancements. And we know that mathematicians and scientists play a significant role in this very complex and dynamic ecosystem. Cutting edge mathematicians have pioneered the way forward and their insights have really led to the development of info technology as well as the biotechnology arenas. Ultimately, the need for these innovative 
um, thinkers for the 21st century creates this need for education reform, or as I like to call it, um, education transform. You know, we want education to actually get better and evolve as time goes by. Now, the exponential growth in technology of the last few decades has led to many breakthroughs in innovations. And I've just got a few examples here, GPS, social networking, advances in robotic medicine, which is what my brother is involved with as a surgeon, and quantum computing, just to name a few. Now, I'd like to share a couple of quotes with you about mathematics that may surprise you. Mathematics has beauty and romance. It's not a boring place to be. It is an extraordinary place to be. It's worth spending time there. And Marcus de Sertoy is quite a, a well-known um, mathematician from Oxford. And I wanted to share one more quote with you from Ginsburg. Ginsburg said, the essence of mathematics is not just producing correct answers, but thinking creatively. I think the explicit instruction, direct instruction method is a teacher-centered approach, which is often adopted as a cycle of explaining, modeling, scaffolding, and practicing. This transmission method of teaching stifles a child's ability to think independently. It stifles their ability to be curious, and I think it blocks their creativity. In places around the world, governments have announced a move towards this back to basics approach, as I've mentioned before, and that involves teaching students those facts and skills very often in isolation without any context or conceptual understanding. Now, this type of approach encourages a focus on teaching to the test with the ultimate goal of increasing standardized test scores. And it is indeed a sad state of affairs for teachers who are robbed of their own creativity when designing learning experiences for their students. So what do we need to do instead? We need to be adopting, I think, a more social constructivist approach, which is a learning theory by Vygotsky. And we need to be really adopting more social cultural theories I know in reality that many mathematics classrooms around the world still actually rely on the didactic delivery transmission mode of approaches from the 1950s. Um, and I'm trying to encourage a more investigative inquiry approach to foster creativity in a collaborative environment. I've seen so many movies, current movies that have been made in the last, let's say two to three years, and the modern classroom portrayed in the movie still looks like this picture on the left. It still looks like uh, single rows of students sitting by themselves and not engaging in any group work. And I think that movies a lot of the time reflect the cultural expectations of that society. And it tells us a lot about what we think a classroom actually should look like. Now, what is mathematical beauty? Well, mathematical beauty, I think, can be uh, encapsulated in the method. So we can have an unusually succinct proof or a proof that is like that can be generalizable to lots of different situations. I think there can be beauty in the results that we get. And the, I gave a talk previously about the yang Hoys triangle, which is also known as Pascal's triangle, and the beauty of how those patterns emerge from such a simple context or scenario. Euler's identity, which involves these absolutely remarkable numbers, E, I, pi, one, and zero. We have the golden ratio, which is found in nature, as well as the Fibonacci sequence, which is found everywhere in nature. I think mathematical beauty can also come in the visuals. So we see so many structures and patterns in nature. An example of a theorem that really is um, reflects beauty in mathematics is the four color theorem of when used in math. Okay, so what is creativity? Okay, there is no single definition, one definition, because creativity is actually quite diverse and multifaceted, and there exists actually a vast number of different definition characteristics. Most researchers, however, do define creativity as a dynamic mental activity that has these three different components. So number one, it's something new or novel or different. 
Number two, um, the outcome must be uh, useful, appropriate. And number three, what is produced is of high quality, basically. The late, great Sir Ken Robinson defined creativity as an imaginative activity fashioned so as to produce outcomes that are both original and of value. So it's that novel idea, but that the outcome or the product is actually of value, has a positive effect. So we can think of creativity in our classrooms from two different perspectives. We can think of teaching creatively, and that means looking at imaginative approaches of how we teach. We can actually teach for creativity. So they are skills and competencies and creative thinking that we develop in our students. But I want to remind everybody that teaching creative thinking skills to students can only happen when teachers themselves are teaching creatively and they need to adopt the right mindset. So I'd like to discuss some of the components for creative mathematics teaching. How do we actually teach creatively in the mathematics classroom? And this is based on the work of um, Annabal uh, from 1996. And this research suggested that teachers need to actually have domain specific knowledge. So we do need to have a deep understanding of mathematics in order for us to be able to teach creatively. What else do we need? We need to, the ability to be able to differentiate. So that means that we address different cognitive styles, personality characteristics and generate novel ideas from that. We also need to be allowing teachers to develop their own creative teaching strategies with variation. So not being prescriptive about how they teach a lesson and giving them some ownership over their lessons. And lastly, how do we teach mathematics creatively? Well, it's to do with task design. So task design needs to be well thought out, interesting and meaningful learning experiences. So how do we actually creatively design tasks? So I'm gonna go through just a few important elements of task design. So they need to be inductive, they need to be inquiry-based, they need to be open-ended, they need to be visual, and they need to encourage divergent thinking. But notice how here in the corner, I've got this very important key idea of collaboration. So it's really important that we allow our students to engage in the classroom, teach creatively, but through the collaborative process. So thank you so much for joining me today to look at the beauty and the creativity of mathematics. This is only a small introduction to this topic. And there is actually a lot more to delve deeply into when it comes to cultivating creativity and really trying to show students the beauty of mathematics. If you've got any comments or suggestions on how we can promote creativity and beauty in the mathematics classroom, then please put a comment in the section below. Thank you so much again for joining me and I hope to see you next time.